Good evening. And welcome to everyone. Today we come together to celebrate the 30th Sunday of Ordinary Time. Please include among your intentions a special remembrance for the repose of the soul of Margaret Rogus. We ask all those with cell phones to please turn them off or put them on silent mode at this time. Our celebrant for this Mass is Father Jonathan. Please stand. Our processional hymn is number 716. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Today's gospel is the great two commandments of Jesus Christ, love God and neighbor as yourself. Challenging commandments in this time, but nonetheless something that needs to be addressed, something we really can't dance around. And it would seem that it's... Um, the, the commands or the sermon itself, but nonetheless, how often do we have trouble putting these into action? So today I'm simply going to offer a few reflective quotes that maybe help put this great command in context as we try to live out these commands of Jesus Christ. Before we enter these sacred mysteries, we call to mind our sins, the times we failed to serve God, and we come before his altar begging for his mercy. Lord Jesus, you are Son of the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are Son of Mary. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the Word made flesh that dwell among us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life.
Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, increase our faith, hope, and charity, and make us love what you command so that we may merit what you promise. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. reading from the book of Exodus. Thus says the Lord, you shall not molest or oppress an alien, for you were once aliens yourselves in the land of Egypt. You shall not wrong any widow or orphan. If ever you wrong them and they cry out to me, I will surely hear their cry. My wrath will flare up, and I will kill you with the sword. Then your own wives will be widows, and your children orphans. If you lend money to one of your poor neighbors among the people, you shall not act like an extortioner toward him by demanding interest from him. If you take your neighbor's cloak as a pledge, you shall return it to him before sunset. For this cloak of his is the only covering he has for his body. What else has he to sleep in? If he cries out to me, I will hear him for I am compassionate. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to From the first letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians, brothers and sisters, we know what sort of people we were among you for your sake, and you became imitators of us and of the Lord, receiving the word in great affliction with joy from the Holy Spirit, so that you became a model for all the believers 
in Macedonia, and in Achaia. For from you the word of the Lord has sounded forth, not only in Macedonia and Achaia, but in every place your faith in God has gone forth, so that we have no need to say anything. For they themselves openly declare about us what sort of reception we had among you and how you turn to God from idols to serve the living and true God and to await his Son from heaven, who was he raised from the dead, Jesus, who delivers us from the coming wrath. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. When the Pharisees heard that Jesus had silenced the Sadducees, they gathered together and one of them, a scholar of the law, tested him by asking, Teacher, which commandment of the law is the greatest? He said to him, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the greatest and first commandment. The second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. The whole law and the prophets depend upon these two commandments. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord. First Holy Gospel. As I attempt to preach a sermon on this great commandment today, I will be honest that I come before you with a sense of uh, trepidation and maybe even some fear and trembling, first of all, because it seems like, in general, this commandment is lost in our day and age as the world seems to be becoming more and more chaotic, or not completely lost, but seems to be becoming um, more and more lost, um, if that's the right to say it. And also because I'm not really sure that I can give a decent treatment of this command from God, this command from Jesus Christ that comes directly off the lips of Jesus Christ and is recorded in Matthew's Gospel. But nonetheless, I don't think I really can sort of steer around it either. I don't think that would be fear so fair. So some kind of treatment of it is bound to fall up short. I'm well aware of that, nor do I think that I'm qualified to somehow explain what Jesus is talking about. Um, and the anxiety also is personal because anytime I consider this commandment, I realize how often I myself have failed to live up to it. And as soon as I think that maybe, just maybe, I've grasped what this commandment means, it sort of becomes a mystery that just sort of floats away. Similar to a, as soon as I think I have Jesus figured out, he sort of just floats away as I realize that he is in fact a mystery and so too is this commandment. And so 
what I'd like to do, um, in light of also Exodus, which uh, a thousand years or more before explains this in just sort of practical detail, um, even prior to the coming of Jesus Christ, is to maybe offer you a context based on some people that I've read who I think may be, at least theologically or spiritually speaking, get this a little bit better than I do. And so I have, I know this sounds like a lot, I have five quotes for you. And then that way, if I make no sense to you, maybe at least one of these quotes can be taken away. And uh, you can sort of chew on that as we try to really enter into what this commandment might mean. The first, and I steal this from uh, Bishop Barron's translation of Thomas Aquinas, is to love is to will the good of the other as other. And as Barron himself says, it's precisely the comma as other part that we have trouble with, that we recognize the other as other, and even if they're entirely and completely different than us in creed, race, social standing, and even more so in this world and beliefs, I still have to brace them as other and love them anyway, and on top of that, actually will the good of that person. Very challenging indeed. And as I recognize the other as other, I also somehow recognize that even though they're other, they were made in the image and likeness of God just like me, and so that somehow, even though they're other, we're in the same human family. And hence the second quote um, delivered by James Keenan, a moral theologian from Boston College, who says that love is our willingness to enter into the chaos of the other. So now recognizing the other as other, I recognize also that they're part of the same human family that I am in. I recognize my own chaos, and I know I use that word over and over again, my own brokenness, my own issues, my own despair, my own anxiety. Their chaos mirrors my chaos, and that I long to enter into them as each of us are hopefully healed in this world that needs love so much. So my willingness to enter in the chaos of another, how willing am I to do that? The third quote is from Gregory Boyle, who is the Jesuit priest that works with gangs in LA, and he says the measure of our compassion or love is not in the service that we give to those in the margins or quote the other, but rather in our willingness to see ourselves in kinship with them. You've heard me say this one before. So as I recognize the other and as I mirror their chaos, realizing that their chaos is my chaos, because we're the same human family, then I also long to see myself in kinship with them. That they were born, created in the image and likeness of God, and so too is I. So that's my brother, and that's my sister, quite frankly, whether I like it or not. The fourth is by a scripture scholar by the name of the last name, Shane Wood. I almost forgot that one. Shane Wood, who says, love is, a, is a move toward with the intent of union. I've recognized the other, which could be the very next person I cross when I leave this church. I've recognized their chaos. I long to enter into the chaos of that person. I see myself in kinship. And so then it's my duty as a Christian disciple to seek unity, to seek union with that person so that love may grow and the proverbial ripple effect of love may continue. Now, if all of these seem a little esoteric or a little bit out there or purely theoretical, the scripture scholar Garrett Lofink who, and I have his book up there. Actually, I'm going to go get it real quick. I forgot my quote. The scripture scholar, Garrett Lofink, says that in the Bible, love is not primarily um, a deep feeling or an upwelling emotion. Rather, it's practical help, assistance, in solidarity, and it insists on communion. He also echoes Matthew chapter 5, where it says, if someone takes your cloak, give him your other cloak. If someone presses you in a service for one mile, go two. If someone slaps your cheek, turn the other cheek. It's personal, it's communal, and it's about the person right in front of us. 
But we've blown this out of proportion in our world. As somehow we either fantasize love as, okay, yeah, I love everybody, in this sort of false universal sense of love, but it never quite gets played out in the concrete. And I forget that what I actually can affect is the communion in which I dwell, in which I live, and those people right in front of me. How much has that got lost in translation in our modern world? Lofink talks about this false sense of universal love. He said we have to be careful in using this word, quote, universal. Of course, love is universal, but we have to be careful that it doesn't become a false idea of universal love in the context of some, what he calls, inconsequential humanism. That I sort of just sort of in this theoretical and abstract way say, well, yeah, I love everybody, but happily, and I'm going to quote him directly, so bear with me. I know I use a lot of quotes. Happily, the statement we must love all human beings has a kind of an empty universal intention. Now listen to this does not appear anywhere in the Bible, neither in the New or the Old Testament. The Bible is much too realistic to talk of such misty dreams. It's not interested in that. The Bible says we are to love our neighbors and also that we should love our enemies, but meaning those we really have something to do with. This is how communities form. Not some millions of people we can easily love because they are so beautifully distanced from us. It takes the abstract context, the theoretical of love, and applies it to the immediate, which is what the world needs. This love is always tied to the concrete experience of common life in the individual community. Thus, the universality of Christian love does not consist in the fact that we gather people of the world into our hearts and spirit. Instead, it is realized primarily in that through our aid, more and more Christian communities come into existence throughout the world, communities in which fraternal and sororal love can be lived. So where does love begin? Right here. Where does it start? When you walk out that door. Where does it exist? Right here in Center County. I've heard over and over and over again from the confessional to my office about the problems of the world. And I weep for the world at times too. But don't use those as an excuse to not love the person in front of you. Christianity is a grassroots campaign and it ripples out from there then maybe, just maybe, starting here at Our Lady of Victory, we can begin a current of love and create a community in which God desires to look upon. And that community may just inspire other communities as we begin to really understand and comprehend what concrete love is all about. Now together we profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. 
and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And now we call upon this God who loved us first, and we offer our prayers and petitions to the Father. For the church, may God help us remain faithful to all of his commandments and grow in the fullness of the truth. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those in positions of power, may they be given prudence and courage in serving with justice. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are ill with the virus, may Jesus, the divine physician, offer them hope and provide healing. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have gone before us in faith, may they enjoy the eternal peace in the presence of the Lord. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the names of those who are in the register of our sin, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the repose of the soul of Margaret Rogus, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For your own private intentions, We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. O God of love, we come before you, a community longing to love more, while we also acknowledge our own brokenness and our chaos. In this, we offer ourselves entirely along with these prayers. We ask you to answer all this. Grant, it, grant them in accordance with the divine will, through Jesus Christ, who is our Lord forever and ever. Amen. The offertory hymn is 475. sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. Amen. 
Look, we pray, O Lord, on the offerings we make to your majesty, that whatever is done in your service may be directed above all to your glory through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you so love the world that in your mercy you sent us the Redeemer to live like us in all things but sin, so that you might love in us what you loved in your Son, by whose obedience we have been restored to those gifts of yours that by sinning we had lost in disobedience. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks as an exaltation we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. You never cease to gather people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and he broke the bread. And he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and give you thanks, he said the blessing. And he gave the chalice to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which we poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis our Pope, Mark our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children 
scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom, that we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom we bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. And now, as the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, my peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins from the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us share with each other a sign of Christ's peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world, how blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
First communion hymn is number 612. Let us pray. May your sacraments, O Lord, we pray, perfect in us what lies within them, that what we now celebrate in signs we may, we may one day possess in truth through Christ our Lord. Our announcements. Father Jonathan will offer a series of four reflections entitled person of Christ, encountering Christ in our lives, the scripture, and the church. Reflections will be held on Tuesdays at 7 p.m. starting this Tuesday, October 17th. They'll be held in the church proper so we have enough room for social distancing. They'll also be live stream on Facebook for those who do not feel comfortable attending in person. For extra all souls envelopes in the gathering space available to write the names of your deceased loved ones. These envelopes will be placed at our deceased shrine during the month of November. You may also use the envelopes found in your November envelope packet. There will only be a 9 a.m. Mass this Monday. No 7 a.m. Mass. The Lord be with you. And with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Mass is ended. Go in peace to love and serve.
processional hymn is number 710. Oh. 